Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. In this video, we're gonna take a look at solar panels. There's a lot of different options on the market when it comes to solar panels. There's some that can be folded, there's some that can be rolled up, there's some that break down like a suitcase, some that are rigid that would mount on something like your house. And so when you actually go to purchase solar panels, what's important? In this channel, obviously, we discuss emergency preparedness, so we're gonna look through that lens of what you would want if there was a disaster emergency when it comes to what options you have with solar panels. We're gonna go over the different things like wattage, efficiency, uh, durability, how easy they are to collapse and a breakdown and to move with them. So what we'll do in this video is we'll go through these different considerations without getting too overly technical. We're gonna look at this more from an application perspective, but we will go into a little more of the technical information. So let's jump in. Please consider subscribing to our newsletter by clicking on the link in the description and comment section below. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and click the like button to help the channel grow. Foldable solar panels. When it comes to solar and mobility or deployment anywhere, a foldable, spreadable solar blanket can't be beaten. All that efficiency and versatility come with a heftier price tag though. These are made for durability and portability, so it's the best option if you're on the move. The lightest option and with the best power output to weight ratio. The real bonus of the flexible solar version is that it will perform better in low light or partial shading. They are wired in series, so if one of the sections of cells is covered, it still will collect energy. These off-grid Trek solar blankets use SunPower Gen 2 solar cells with a 23.5% efficiency rating that also work extremely well in low light conditions. A significant advantage of these is that you can spread it over non-flat surfaces. If a sharp rock dropped onto a section of the panels, the whole panel isn't ruined, so they are super hardy. These 120 watt power film and 120 watt solar blanket both are under 8 pounds. That is amazing when you consider that a 200 watt monocrystalline panel that will produce roughly the same output in watts weighs in at around 25 pounds, over 3 times the weight. Obviously the ability to fold the solar blanket up and put it in your pack and go is a massive advantage to maintaining mobility after a disaster. Your typical rigid 200 watt monocrystalline or polycrystalline panels can be over 5 feet long and 2 feet wide. That makes them difficult to bug out with when time is of the essence. The solar blanket and power film will work better in low light conditions compared to the monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar panels, something we'll cover momentarily. The solar blanket is one fourth of the size of the power film blanket. It's completely waterproof versus water resistant, and it produces more electricity than the large power film at a lower price point. These are your best options for overcast days as they will still work when a rigid panel cell will not. Both the power film and the off-grid Trek solar blanket are solid choices. They're both lightweight, easily portable, and easily deployable in most terrain and situations. These are built with rugged military usage in mind. They'll both sustain damage and keep working, though they'll drop in their efficiency. The off-grid Trek solar blanket represents the next generation for these products. Compared to the power film, it has a smaller footprint, is waterproof versus water resistant, and is about two-thirds of price. I'll be doing a more in-depth video on Off-Grid Trek's products in the coming months as their products check a lot of boxes for me when it comes to prepping. Lightweight for mobility, durable, and efficient. I'll post a link in the description section along with a coupon code if you want to check out their products. Basic of Solar Panels Monocrystalline versus Polycrystalline You'll hear these terms a lot when it comes to rigid solar panels. Monocrystalline solar panels have solar cells made from a single crystal of silicone, whereas polycrystalline solar panels have solar cells made up from many silicon fragments melted together. Polycrystalline solar panels, also referred to as multicrystalline or mini crystal silicone, generally have lower efficiency than monocrystalline options, but their advantage is a lower price point. Both are good choices for your home and other fixed permanent or semi-permanent locations. This is going to be your most affordable option without sacrificing too much on output. You can't take these on a hike, but it's going to mount better on a vehicle, RV, or structure. In low light, you will see significant decreases in output. In partial shade, the performance suffers greatly. While a parallel connection is possible, these panels are mostly designed to be wired in series. So if one of the cell sections is completely covered, the entire panel will cease to output energy. Wattage. Solar panel wattage represents a solar panel's theoretical power production under ideal sunlight and temperature conditions. Wattage is calculated by multiplying volts times amps, whereas volts represent the amount of force of the electricity, and amperes, or amps, refers to the aggregate amount of energy used. 
Even a 20 watt panel will charge a battery, but it will take significantly longer, maybe days to charge a large battery. A 20 watt solar panel might be suitable for charging small electronics and 12 volt batteries. The basic math here is that the panel's wattage times the number of hours of sunlight times the number of panels. That's gonna give you total watts. 1000 watts is one kilowatt. The more wattage the panel produces, obviously, the more electricity you have to work with and the shorter amount of sunlight needed. For this reason, the higher the wattage of the panel, the greater the cost. For wattage, you need to circle back to the question considering your energy needs. Are you gonna to need to power a refrigerator or just charge up small devices? Are you gonna to need to power tools or simply provide light through the night? The wattage, size of the system, and solar panels required all hinge upon these questions. Efficiency. A 6 to 12% efficiency rating means that 6 to 12% of the sunlight that falls on it gets converted to energy. 20% efficiency means that 20% of the sunlight is captured and converted to electricity. The average solar panel efficiency is between 10 to 12%. The solar panel market is not regulated, so solar companies advertise, like auto manufacturers, stating that you will get up to a certain MPG that you can never see unless you're driving downhill with the strong gust of wind at your back. So when you see the up to symbol or between a certain range, you know it is not actually a true efficiency rating. Also, be aware that all solar panels will degrade in performance for every degree over 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees centigrade. Scalability. One panel that produces 100 watts connected to four similar panels will provide you an array producing 500 watts. The ability to connect multiple panels into your system will give you more electricity to work with. So with any component or panel, you need to make sure that you can scale it up and you want to be aware of any limitations. Some systems might be completely closed. Some might allow you to connect up to a limited number of additional panels, but that's it. Deployment. The next consideration is how you expect to deploy the panels. If you're going to affix it atop a structure permanently, your rigid panels will give you the best performance and are the most resistant to annual weather. They'll hold up better. If you expect to be mobile but have limited pack room, a foldable panel will allow you to pick it up and transport it in and out of a vehicle much more easily than non-foldable panels. Plus these foldable panels have legs you can adjust to make sure you're getting the best angle for maximum sun exposure. At the ultimate end of deployability is a foldable or solar blankets. These have a minimal footprint in your backpack and the options on the market can go up to 215 watts. They will work if several cell sections are damaged or covered. The power film option is water resistant and the off-grid truck solar blanket is waterproof. You can quite literally fold them up, go, and then redeploy them in a matter of seconds in almost any terrain. All that versatility and efficiency do come at a price. They'll be the most expensive of the bunch as well. Light. Will you be able to get direct unobstructed sunlight or do you live in an area where overcast days are the norm? If sunlight is a rarity in your area, you'll want to get panels wired in series, which increase voltage and operate best in low light conditions. Panels connected in parallel increase amps, which work best in bright light conditions. Your out of the box rigid aluminum frame panel will not perform at peak on cloudy days, but with the help of some parallel branch adapters, you can be up and running. In a series connected array, even the passing shade of a tree as the sun transits the sky can zero out your energy production by dropping the efficiency too low to be of consequence. Storage. Finally, you need to consider what you will do with all the free energy you're pulling out of the sky. If you don't have a battery or a solar generator system, all your energy needs to be used in real time or it's simply wasted. I've done several reviews on solar generators, so I'll let you take a look at those videos to find out more. I'll post a link to the playlist in the description section below. These solar generator systems typically range from a few hundred to thousands of dollars. This too is going to depend on what you think your energy needs will be. The prices will vary by multiple factors, including their allowed input, kilowatt hour storage, continuous output and weight as well. Many people find it easier and more affordable to buy a whole kit that fits their needs, which is a good strategy for beginners. I recently posted a video I'll link to in the cards above detailing the newest generation of portable, expandable solar generators. Rigid solar panel considerations. Here's a quick rundown of the rigid solar panels I've collected for us to look at here today. I don't want to delve too deep into the science, but I do want to highlight the practical aspects for emergency preparedness of each covering what you should look for when shopping for these options. 
The Solar Storm Rigid Polycrystalline 100 Watt Solar Panel is a good choice for getting the most power per dollar. It's a rigid panel and it's very affordable at a price point of over just $100. The polycrystalline PV cells are encased in tempered glass and framed in aluminum. It has a limited portability for mobile applications, but it would be your best choice for permanent exterior mounting. I've used these panels in the past where I don't move them too much and know that they can handle the elements. The Ascent 100 watt solar panel is a happy compromise between the rigid and flexible solar panels because it folds in half like a suitcase. That makes it much more portable than the other two and less acceptable to damage. It's an excellent mobile choice, but not as suitable for permanently fixed use. The panel includes a rugged kickstand that allows you to adjust the angle to optimize charging. I've also received other solar panels over the years reviewing these, and a few worth mentioning are the Jackery and EcoFlow solar panels. The Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt solar panel takes portability seriously and has an even more rugged design. It also weighs just 9 pounds, so it's lightweight, foldable, and with an easy carry handle. It has a built-in kickstand to help you adjust the angle for maximum sun exposure. While this panel is fine for charging little devices, its connection type definitely limits its capabilities, not to mention its seat price tag of $300 for 100 watts. The EcoFlow 110 watt solar panel is built to be scalable and portable. You can chain several panels together to generate power more efficiently. It's foldable and waterproof. You simply need to unzip it, unfold it, angle it towards the sun, and plug it into the battery system. The built-in kickstand allows you to angle it from 0 to 180 degrees. If price isn't a concern, this panel is a good option for you. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to help you determine which of these is the best fit for you. Again, if you want to check out any of these products, I'll put links in the description section below. If you have any questions or comment, please post those in the comment section below. And I typically try to respond within the first hour of releasing a video. As always, stay safe out there.